Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to show you a Yugo M70 AK parts kit. Now, if you remember back a couple weeks ago, I did a live stream showing the kit that I had bought from Apex. Well, it had a couple problems. It wasn't quite as described. And as I told you guys, I was going to send it back and get a new one. I will say this, look, from the beginning to the end, Apex has been great. The guy who answered the phone when I called with the problem was very polite. He was very cool. He immediately got it. He understood. Look, these are real gun guys that work at Apex. Even AK guys too. So like the stuff I was talking about, they totally understood. So that was pretty cool. Well, I went through the RMA process and I got my replacement kit in the mail. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up for you guys. Take a look. I just opened it up very briefly just to make sure it was what I thought it was. But... I haven't really had a chance to look at it yet, so let's take a look at this. I'm not going to be able to do all of the complete unboxing on camera, but here you go, guys. We're going to start from here, and I'm going to get all the parts out and see what we've got. All right. Yugoslavian. M70B. So this is the milled fixed stock parts kit. Good to very good condition. Oh, that's kind of sharp there. I almost started off the video by cutting myself, but sorry, no blood to see. You guys would probably like that, but hey. All right. So what these are is these are a milled receiver AKs. Per import law, these had to be cut into three separate pieces, etc. So they're no longer considered a machine gun. In fact, this is not considered a firearm at all. This is completely what's called demilled by the ATFs and the federal government standards. We can see right here the Zastava Kragujevac. Yugoslavia logo with the C and the Z and the circles there so By the way, this is the same company that's continued to make all the Yugo stuff even after Yugoslavia fell These are now in what's known as Serbia and The new Zastava arms that's coming in from the United States, you know now they're importing a lot of stuff from From the same factory so quite a bit of history here, but that's cool the way these receiver stubs work you still get the original logo there, which I like. Now, if you remember in the last kit that I got, they had cut the kit back a little bit too far where part of the lightning cut was cut into. This is exactly how it was pictured and described, and this is pretty cool. So, what's going to end up happening with this kit is I'm going to get it rewilded, right? So, when you rewild, you have to have like a repair section that's put in the middle, or sometimes it's the back two-thirds of the receiver. And the fabricator has to square this off nice, butt up the two pieces, weld it again. So, this is important to me, to have this complete lightning cut. Because now they have a nice place that they can start to do their reweld with. And this is part of the gun. Even though this part is legally not part of the receiver, the way the laws work is this. And I'll explain to you guys real quick for those of you that are wondering. Unfortunately, there's this goofy law... It's not really a law actually it's actually just a bureaucratic regulation that has the force of law so for all intents and purposes there's a law that says once a machine gun always a machine gun so they can't simply send this to us you know as a complete gun obviously the uh, importation of machine guns was banned in 1968 and then of course machine guns all together were banned in 1986 with only the ones registered before that being grandfathered so what they have to do is they have to cut it into three separate pieces and then it's no longer considered a firearm whatsoever. It's considered a paperweight or just considered parts. And what they're going to do, like I said, is somebody's going to fabricate a repair section and now this whole receiver becomes made in the USA. So even though it says Yugoslavia here, <coughs> pardon me, the new receiver is going to be considered a USA receiver for ATF purposes section 922 our purposes etc but what's cool about these is this currently the kits that we get normally have the barrels cut up now it didn't used to always be this way but there was another bureaucratic rule that has the force of law that said 
once it had a machine gun barrel on it, it was still considered a machine gun. So, like, the barrel itself became banned from importation. So you'd have to cut the barrel up. And that's why a lot of these parts kits we get today are just a bag of parts. And you have to buy a United States barrel. You have to press it into the receiver, pin it, head space, and then what's called populate the barrel with things like the front sight, base, the gas block, and in this case, gas block with the thing that goes up that the anti-gunners hate, which is the grenade launching sight and the gas shut off. Gas tube, retainer, handguard retainer, all of this stuff is already on here. So this is pretty cool. I suspect these kits have been in the United States for a while. Probably, maybe they bought it from a private collection or somebody had a you know stash of these in a warehouse. But this has the original barrel on it. So this is what you call an original barreled front end. And yeah, this is pretty cool. So, so far, this is looking good, guys. We're going to note the serial number because in the description, it said that it you know showed a picture of the receiver stub with the full lightning cut. And it said the major components would have matching numbers. So, the receiver stub itself, right here, the bolt, and the carrier, and the dust cover. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. To get one of these guns that's completely matching, that's going to be tough. Those of you that are familiar with these guns, these have a long service history. These were used in the, you know, Balkan Wars, Yugoslavian Civil Wars. These guns have been used a lot. A lot of the, you know, Yugos have shown up in the Middle East. They've been horse traded and sold all the way around the world. So to find one of these that's completely intact, especially with this being an older milled variant, probably not going to find them parts matching very often. In fact, it's the norm that they would be non-parts matching. So, to have some of the major parts match, pretty cool, right? So, here's the barrel front end. We'll come back and look at more of this in a few minutes. We also have a stock. So, this being the M70B, this is a fixed stock. I'm noticing right away the serial numbers on the stock do not match, which again, this is totally fine with me. It wasn't advertised that it was going to match, so that's cool. And I kind of really wouldn't expect it to match either, to be honest, so whatever. Especially the butt stock. These things were easily broken just due to the type of abuse and the different environments these guns were used in. It's kind of crazy. All right. So with the Yugos, these are a little bit different than how a lot of them affect. So we have a, a mounting area here with the wood, and there's basically a long bolt, a long machine screw that just goes from the back of the buttstock all the way through, and this is what holds the stock onto your rifle. So whereas normally a mill receiver AK is going to have the upper and lower tang with the screws that go through the top, bottom, Yugoslavia has always kind of done it their own way. So. Basically, it comes with a butt pad, rubber butt pad that goes over the back here. Okay. Here's the two screws that go with it. Now, I would note there's no provision for a cleaning kit on these, like there are most AKs, AKMs. So, yeah. Looks like there's a little um, note on here. I can't read it. Something that's written in... Um, a foreign language I can't read, whether it's Serbian or whatnot. But yeah. So the bus stock's actually in great shape. It's a little bit dirty, but I see no cracks in it. Really no gouges to speak of. A couple little hairline scratches. A little divot right here. But this is cool, guys. I want this gun to have the used look. I'm not going to refinish it. I mean, I'll probably refinish the repair section and then distress it to make it match the front receiver and all that. But... No, this is good. This is good. I like this. This will be cleaned up nice just to get some of the dirt off of it and good to go. So I'll have to say, so far looking at everything here, I'm pretty happy. I really, really am. Apex did a good job. And if you guys are watching over at Apex, I really thank you for getting this right and taking care of me. Um, the guy I talked to on the phone, really, really nice guy. Very professional. And like I said earlier, when I told him, man, I'm not trying to be nitpicky. But I'm like an AK guy, like having the correct amount of receiver stubs going to matter on this because I'm going to send it off to, you know, a, a shop to have it rewilded and 
yeah, those little things matter to me. Having that full intact front section. He goes, man, I totally get it. I'm a gun guy and all of us here are. So thank you, Apex, if you're watching. This is looking really good so far. All right, we got another bag here. And there is some Cosmoly. I'm trying to keep my hands a little clean. So when I click the mouse here, I don't have to buy a new mouse. But ah, what's a mouse? These AK kits are more important than that, right? Okay, here's our guide rod recoil spring. Looks like it's in great shape. Here's our top cover or our dust cover. Now I know this is a milled receiver, so it's thick. This is thick and heavy, substantially thicker than what you'd find on a stamped, you know, AKM type model. And this has the same serial number as the receiver stub cool 92711 so so far so good on the matching serial numbers this has a little you know patina a little bit of you know slight slight surface rust not pitted all the way through or anything it's not active rust but you can see where it's been pitted now this is crazy look at the inside of this see the blued finish that's what color this whole gun was so that's how much you know just honest wear this has where basically the whole entire receiver cover looks like it's been sandblasted there's a teeny bit of bluing there where it was kind of protected from the environment a little bit by the little ledge on the top of the um rear area of the receiver but wow that's kind of crazy if you think about it looks almost like it was sandblasted even though i'm sure it wasn't and for the yugo rifles by the way their standard finish was generally bluing whereas a lot of the rest of the com block you know, countries that made the AKs, Russia included, they started off bluing a lot of them, but then as time would go on, they would either just paint them over raw metal, other times they would parkerize and paint over the parkerizing. But you'll find things more like a painted finish on a lot of them. You know, the early Hungarians, those are blued, but then as they got refurbished, they went to um, paint over park or sometimes just paint. Um, you know, Russia, some of the very early ones, were um, blued, but after that, pretty much always, you know, painted. You've got your Chinese guns, were blued for the most part, and then your Yugoslavian guns. So this does have a blued finish on it, even though in many spots it's completely worn. Now with the bolt and carrier assembly here, those were always just polished. So this part was never blued that I know of on the Yugoslavians. And if it was, it was probably something done after the fact. None of my kits or guns have ever had blue bolts or carriers. So, looking at this carrier here, this is looking pretty good, guys. In fact, it looks like it's in great shape. I don't know if this is a brand new gas piston here, or if it's just been cleaned up that well, but this thing is like spotless. Normally, they don't clean them this good, so this is looking pretty darn good. If we look at back at the carrier tail... I don't see any type of deformation or peening, whereas a lot of my Yugo kits, I did a video a while back, almost a year ago now, I think, on an um, M72 B1 RPK parts kit, and there was definitely a little peening, and I was just showing you guys how that's normal, but this one here, I don't really see much signs of, of contact or use at all, actually, so looking pretty good so far. Now the Cosmoline is pretty thick here to get this bolt out. It's kind of stuck. But here's our bolt. And the bolt has the same serial number, the 92711. Man, this is looking beautiful, guys. This is pretty cool. We'll see this is a full bolt, again, for full auto. Now, I'm not going to build this into a machine gun, but... It does have the you know the full profile where a lot of these you see that they're reprofiled here. This is still the full military profile for the bolt and the carrier. It's hard to see in the light here. Yep, ninety-two seven one one. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. The guy at Apex assured, man, we're gonna take care of you. And look, guys, mistakes happen. If I got fired every time I made a mistake, I wouldn't be any business anymore. So I'm actually more happy than ever with Apex because they had a little problem. They sent me a shipping label. I had nothing out of pocket. 
couple weeks later, I have this kit here. Boy, is it nice. Yeah, the Cosmoline's real thick here, but this is good. I like to have the parts like these, you know, coated in Cosmoline, because this stuff's an excellent rust preventative, and if it hadn't been packed like this for all these years, it'd probably be a rust bucket right now. And it'll certainly keep it preserved until I get around to getting it built, right? All right, cool, good deal. And when I say I'm getting this built, what I mean is, is this requires actual pretty, you know, decent level welding and fabricating skills, and certainly someone that has experience with the AK and the milled variants. So, you know, some of you guys may be good enough to weld this up in your garage or your shop, and that's awesome if you can. But keep in mind, you know, rewelding an AK is much, much more difficult than putting together a stamped receiver build. And even then, a stamped receiver build requires you know, certain types of tools and gauges. You don't really need that many advanced tools to build an AK, but certainly all the little jigs and proper rivet tools are gonna make it much, much, much easier. So it's kind of like anything in life. The higher skill you have, the less you need the tools. If you have a little bit lower skill, you're probably gonna need to buy more tools to make sure you're getting everything right. But with something like this, this is over my head. I mean, I don't have time to, you know, really learn how to, to weld this good. And even if I did have the time, I don't know if I'd ever pull it off. So this will be getting sent off to either Two Rivers or um, Turbo, which is my guns Northwest. He goes by Turbo Guns, or Turbo This, rather, on a lot of the forums. And I'll show you guys in a minute a milled, another milled Yugo that was done at Two Rivers, my M64, which I've showed in other videos. But yeah, nice bolt, nice carrier, nice dust cover. I don't mind the little bit of patina and you know old surface rust to me this is just all character i want this to look like it's kind of a battlefield pickup and basically and that's why i was stressing so much about the front receiver stuff being as complete as possible i want this gun to look as close as possible and have as close to as many original parts as possible as it did when it was on the battlefield and when it was used because yeah the ak is a great tool i just showed in my last stream two streams ago rather the wasser that's a utility tool for me that's one of my go-to guns if i were ever to need it but when it comes to these other guns i like them you know yeah of course because they're a gun and because they're a great fighting tool but i also like them because of all the history behind them the stories that they would tell and you know i research the history in these different conflicts and hopefully what we can learn from these conflicts and just again the story all of it and the history behind it so nine times out of ten if I'm going to redo an old gun or, or build a gun or get a gun built, I'm going to try to get it as close to its original format as possible. And that's just what's interesting to me. Nothing against, you know, adding all the rails, lights, and lasers. That's your prerogative. But I don't think a lot of people are going to buy a Yugo milled M70 original barrel kit to do all that to. I mean, maybe you would, but... Okay, so I showed you earlier. Let me get all these parts out. This is the bag of all the goodies, okay? To try to get some of these parts out without stuff flying all the way across the room. Sorry, this video is going to be a little long, guys. You're either into this or you're not. If you're not into it, you probably already clicked off. But if you guys are like me, it's nice to see all the details on these guns and to kind of go through them. And I've had people before tell me they like it when I do a long video once in a while because then they can use it like a podcast while they're driving or they're at work. So there you go. Hopefully I can pass some time while you guys are in rush hour for you. Okay, so like I said earlier, stupid ATF rules that weren't even laws, but they're, they're rules that have the force of law. We had to cut this receiver in pieces, right? So here's the front section. Just to remind you. Sorry to bore you guys that are really into this, but there's some new guys, you know, that have been around lately that are really wanting to know about the AK. So I want to start from the basics. So this is the rear section. So you can see here, they had to cut it with a nasty, jagged edge plasma cut. ATF requires at least a couple of the cuts to be made in that manner. Now at least the front was cut with a bandsaw. And this is what you want for a reweld. So nice cut here, but then to meet ATF's regulations at the time, they had to go through and... But this rear section can still be used, guys. There's still enough here. You can see for the rivets, for the trigger guard, okay? That's still riveted on there. We've got our our grip knot here, right? 
Now notice this is already quite a bit different than an AKM. See how this nut is part of the actual trigger guard flange and that it's sticking out below the receiver. It does not protrude up on the inside like an AKM does, for example, where you drop it through the top. So there you go. There's a good look at those rivets. And we've got our sling swivel still here. This will still be able to be used. We've got our rear trunnion area. We would call this a rear trunnion if it was an AKM, but with this being a milled receiver, this is simply just the back end of the receiver. And see what I mean now, how there's that socket in the back with just a threaded area for that long machine screw, that long bolt. So you can see it right down in there. That's what I was referring to earlier. This is all really heavy duty, by the way, guys. There's a decent amount of weight just for this little piece right here. You can see that the, the mag catch here is one thick milled piece, whereas on the newer AKMs and whatnot, it's a stamp piece of sheet metal. This is one solid milled part. I don't know if you can see that there. And you'll note, too, that this area is all blued. Now, this is more of an industrial bluing or a military bluing. It doesn't have the shiny gloss that you're going to get on, like, a lot of, like, you know, Ruger firearms or even the Chinese Norinkos and Polytex with that really, really shiny, you know, beautiful luster with the bluing. No, this is what they call more of just a military bluing. But it is still blued nonetheless. There's absolutely no paint on this gun anywhere. So, yeah, there's our rear section. You can still see it has the little keeper here for the dust cover, the dust cover locking mechanism. And as I've said before with the Yugoslavian guns, they kind of had a manual of arms where they wanted every rifleman to be able to be a grenadier. So you'll find many of the Yugos have the grenade launching capability. So what you do is screw a grenade launching spigot on the front, insert the grenade on the spigot, and you put in a blank. So a 762 by 39, it's just a crimped blank so it's basically a cartridge a primer your powder crimp to keep it from pouring out but no projectile so just the gases would go straight down the barrel and launch the rifle grenade well with this being a semi-auto or a machine gun because with the selector it could be either or obviously a lot of gas is expelled up through the gas port of the barrel through the gas block and parts on the gas piston, which is connected to the carrier, that's what cycles the gun. You'll also note the bleed off ports. Three on this side, three on the other side on the gas tube. So you've lost quite a bit of energy. Well, to launch the rifle grenade, you want as much powder, energy, as much bang as you can to launch that heavy projectile, which is a grenade, out of the end. So what happens is when you flip this up, it's your sights, but it's dual purpose. There's a shutoff assembly in here. So this is just a hinge piece that basically closes up this gas block. It doesn't let any of the gas from the barrel come up and act on the action of the gun. So makes the gun a single shot, obviously. More like a bolt action, I should say. And all of the energy is now able to propel this heavy projectile downrange when launching the grenade. So if you ever wondered, that's why they do it. And you would simply, you know, fire the rifle one shot at a time. Just manually rack the, the carrier back and forth, just like you would bolt action gun at that point, basically. So, yeah, which is totally fine because if you think about it, these grenades are single projectiles anyway, so you're not really going to be launching more than one grenade at a rapid succession anyways, seeing how they have to be physically affixed to the end of the grenade launching attachment, so... And just so YouTube knows and whoever knows, because YouTube's policies are so strict, there's no grenade launcher on this gun at all. In fact, this isn't a gun. This is absolutely not a gun. It's completely cut up per ATF spec. This is simply parts. None of these are regulated by the ATF. And there is no grenade launcher on this gun. I'm just giving a historical, you know, little education lesson on how these pieces would have worked when this was indeed a gun. So, yeah, not a gun. And I hate to have to bore you guys with this info, but if YouTube hears me talking about a grenade launcher, though, they might be after it. But nope, this is not a firearm at all, and there is no actual grenade launcher on here. We're talking about history right now. All right, 
let's see what else is in here. But yeah, nice rear section, by the way. I'm happy with this. I'm happy, period, if you guys can't tell. I'm a little tired, so I might not be smiling a lot. But yeah, I'm pretty excited about everything I'm seeing here. And I'm very happy with Apex. These, these kits are... A, Man, these were a rare find. I got a really good deal on this kit, too. You just can't get the original barrel kits anymore. That's the problem. And when you want a historically accurate rifle, you kind of need the original barrel. That's a major part. You need the original receiver. Well, if you can't have the whole receiver, it's so nice to at least have the front and rear stubs so you can still have the correct markings and still know that some of the history of the gun is still with you, right? All right, here's our classic Yugo pistol grip. This would be like the second and basically <laughs> final iteration there's about two main types of yugo pistol grips that i know of this is the solid plastic one there's the original generation one here that's basically the same thing but it's got the metal ferrule on the top on the m64s but keep in mind the m64s were the very very first ones and they weren't ever officially even adopted there were a few thousand of them made but they weren't made in the hundreds of thousands like the m70 so i don't think it's quite correct to call the m64 as a prototype but you can't really call them full production either so this m70 is kind of the first full production you know automatic rifle that they were that they were issuing as far as you know the milled ak's go we've got our grip skew right here so, I mean, some of this stuff's still going to work if we wanted it to, right? I could put the grip right here. See? I'm not going to go get a screwdriver, but you guys get the point. This would screw. I can start to screw it in a little bit. There. It's starting to look like something already, isn't it? <laughs> Ugh, now I'm going to have to have a hard time getting it off of here. I mean, there's, there's a decent amount of Cosmolite on my hands at this point, guys. But, yeah, there we go. And they should be able to reuse this, by the way. So this rear section here, I'm hoping to still have this become part of the final gun. If they choose to use a rear two-thirds, well, then they'll have to transfer some of this stuff over. Not a big deal. These rivets can be ground off. This whole you know, trigger guard assembly with the mag catch can all become off. Re-riveted here. Four rivets here. You can see the three rivets here. So... Now what's interesting too here is this comes with this came with a slant break right in the kit. Most of the M70s I've seen, the mill guns and the M64s typically have a muzzle nut. The last kit that I had to send back also had a muzzle nut. But keep in mind, it may have originally been manufactured with a thread protector, otherwise known as muzzle nut in the AK world. It may have been an issue with that, but these guns were on the battlefield for many generations and certainly were along next to the M70 AB2s. Other types of more modern, you know, stamped variants. So it wouldn't be uncommon at all if a soldier that was using this gun in battle, you know, thought that this was more effective than not having any type of muzzle device at all, which I'd probably rather have the slant break than nothing at all on my AK. So it would have been nothing for them to either request one from the armory or maybe got one from another person's rifle found one whatever so yeah the last time this gun was used in service it obviously had a slant break on it because that's how these kits work when the guns were turned into the arsenal into the depot whatever and put in storage basically they cut them up just like they are put them in the bags send them to us so so i'm going to build just to keep this gun kind of true to its heritage i'm going to put this slant break on here even though most of them have muzzle nuts and probably we came from the factory with a muzzle nut but it's the ak so many different you know in the field repairs have been done to these guns um swapping of parts whatever this is all normal and nothing surprises me in fact about the only thing you can go wrong with the ak is if you ever see anything is a complete absolute because as soon as you do that there's always going to be something a little different so here's our spring this is going to retain our fire control group and also interact with some of the original um, parts. What else have I got in here? Some of these parts I won't be using, by the way, because this is going to be a semi-auto build. There we go. 
There's a spring for the full auto. We have a double hook trigger, which this is pretty much standard fare for any milled receiver gun. I personally prefer a double hook trigger, so this is good. I, I've used the Yugo um, original double hook triggers before, and I like them. So this trigger looks like it's in great shape. Here's what's called our safety sear, otherwise known as a retarder. This would reduce the rate to keep the gun from outrunning itself. Almost lost a little spring here. This I will be able to use. Our disconnector with the spring for the disconnector. And then we have our three trigger group pins. And as you guys know, due to United States law and regulations, one of these is going to go on the spare parts pin because mine's only going to have two pins. The third pin hole, even if you're not using it, you can't even have it on the gun. So I will be using two out of the three trigger group pins because I can't build a machine gun, even though I wish I could. And by the way, I know they're going to want to flag this for this being a machine gun video. This is not a machine gun video. This isn't a gun at all, and I'm not giving anyone instructions on how to build anything. Here's our hammer. Typical looking Yugo hammer. You know, look at the profile on there. More of a gradual profile with a longer flat area where the hammer actually makes contact. These are nice hammers. These are pretty smooth. I've always been a fan of the original Yugo hammers, so I'll be looking forward to using this too. Man, my hands are so sticky right now, guys. But yeah, while I've got this here, I'll show you briefly how this how this stock would interact, just because it's kind of you know different than most if you're not familiar with the Yugos. So there's just a socket area in the back of the receiver. Again, no tangs that stick out. This is completely different than about anything else except for a Yugo variant. And this is just going to fit in this little spot here. Let me see if I can get that in there. Okay. Well, it would normally fit in here. So you know what I'm guessing might have happened? Which is fine. I don't care. It's, you know, this part wasn't promised to be matching. I think this stock probably was with another gun, to be honest with you. And I'm noticing with how nice the wood is on the handguards, they probably just picked me out a nice stock for my trouble to make sure I got a good one. But that's fine. I'm just going to have to sand a little bit off of here. But this would basically go right in the back here. This long bolt would go all the way through and screw into that, that threaded area in the back. So, yeah. And any of you that have fooled around with AKs, you guys know exactly what the deal is. I might actually be able to pound this in with a mallet. A lot of times there is a little bit of fitting that's required to get the part, you know, the wood to line up with the metal properly. Yeah, I don't want to force it and, you know, break anything. But, yeah. I'll have this figured out in about two minutes with a file. I can already see the spots right here where I need to relieve a little bit of material. So, pretty cool. I'm not a huge fan of the, the comb, if you will, of the Yugo stocks. Not my favorite, but again, if I'm going to build a kit like this, I'm going to have the original furniture on it. Like, that's a guarantee. So let me get this stock back in here. I know I'm going to lose a part here, so I'm trying not to lose too many, you know. And... There's one more thing I'm looking for here. Oh, one second, guys. Sorry to go off camera. I don't have a big area here to work with by my computer, so I'm trying to trying to find the um upper wood handguard. I know it came with a handguard for a fact because I immediately saw it at first glance when I opened up the 
the box here. I'll find the handguard in a minute. No big deal. Guess I should have cleaned off my table next to my computer a little better, but I did not anticipate. Getting this kit today, and when I did, I was happy and just wanted to show it to you guys. So, real quick here, before I get done, we'll take a peek at this one. Now... This kit was brought into the country many years ago, back when the original barrels were good to go. So this is also an original barreled Yugoslavian kit. What this would have been called in Yugoslavia was actually just simply the AP, but we call it here collectively the M64. So. To kind of distinguish it from the M70, because Yugoslavia has like 50 things called M70. It gets really confusing. These are these are known as the M64. So, yes, guys, I understand it's technically just a Yugo AP, but I'll call it the M64 for now. Original barrel, similar gas tube. Same type of grenade, launching front sight and shot off, just like I was showing on the other one. This has the muzzle nut. It has the flip up. Tritium sights, so you can use the post. Or, it's hard to see, but there's a little flip up tritium sight there. Also, on the rear sight, there's a flip up where you can switch from your regular old iron sights to one with a tritium vial. So that's another pretty unique feature from Yugoslavia is they actually had night sights, tritium night sights built into these guns like back in the 1970s. So kind of ahead of the curve there if you think about it. Now this being an M64, we're going to see immediately the milled receiver has a different profile. See how the front of it looks here? And there's a Stava markings on it. Are a little bit further back. But other than that, basically the same roll marks as what's on this gun. But look at the receiver here. Okay. This is a lot closer to like a Type 2-ish AK receiver. Where this is a lot closer to a Type 3. So we can see right away immediate difference there in the front of the gun, right? This too has a lightning cut in the same type of area. Now this kit was brought in when they could saw cut them a little bit differently where the where you could basically have band saw only cuts. So one cut was here. The other cut, it's kind of hard to see, was back here. So we had it cut here and here. Now these were both smooth band saw cuts and they were able to retain the original center section. So you'll see these original selector markings. Now Unfortunately, the ATF has changed its stupid rules so many times on how these guns have to be cut up before they're not considered machine guns anymore. This one kind of fell somewhere in between where they were still allowed to do a bandsaw cut on the front, discard the middle section. They didn't, weren't allowed to give it to you. And then in the rear, it was plasma cut. So we're never going to get kits like the good old days like this kit right here. Where it's literally only saw cut with original barrel, original everything. But this is the second best thing because we can't even get these anymore. Like I said, the way Apex had these, I'm sure they've been in the country for several years at least, right? Because if not, we wouldn't even be, quote, allowed to have the barrels on here, the original barrel. Now with this being an M64, for those of you who don't know, what makes this unique, this is a feature that's not really on any of the other milled type AKs out there. This has a true bolt hold open. You notice the bolt held open. Now, a lot of times with the Yugos, the magazine has a bolt hold open follower. But in this case, 
I've removed the mag and the bolt is actually being held open by an integral bolt hold open device. And you'll see part of that where it screws in right here. So there's an actual device. Let me see if we can see in here enough to take a peek. So if you look right under here, I'm going to try to shine the light. We're going to see there's actually there's an actual mechanism in there that's not in really any other AKs. Now there's some that have kind of bolt hold opens like PSLs and some of the Segas, but none of them actually work exactly like how this one does. So yeah, this has a bolt hold open and if you want to release the bolt, there is no like bolt release like on an AR-15. You just simply pull the charging handle back and let her go forward. Now, the only difference and the only kind of uh, drawback to an M64, if you have a working bolt hold open device, which by the way, most people don't, that's what's pretty special about this kit Bill. When Two Rivers rewelded this, from what I understand, they actually worked with Matt Yemens to have him recreate the bolt hold open device because when these are cut, the bolt hold open device is also cut. So. 90% of your M64 kit builds out there are not going to have a functioning bolt hold open. But in any case, if you do have one like this gun does, you have to use an M64 mag. So it's kind of like a regular AK mag, except for you'll notice a little cutout here. See that little square notch cutout? That is to provide clearance for the bolt hold open device to interface with the inside of the mag, where when your follower comes all the way up, so it's basically going to be sticking in that little slot, right? When the follower comes all the way up, it's going to act on the bolt hole open device to hold the gun open. And there's going to be spring pressure keeping it open. So if I just simply rack the gun right now with no mag, it's not going to stay open, right? There's no button or anything on here that I can hit to lock it open. But when the follower through this little notch here is allowed to act upon the bolt hold open device, it holds it open, and when the mag drops, it stays open. So, kind of a neat little feature. If you think about the way the AK works, yeah, when I put in a new mag, I'm going to have to recharge the weapon again. So, is it really a huge advantage? I don't know, but I can kind of see what they were going for at the time, and obviously it wasn't a game changer because they very quickly discontinued this feature. And by the time you get to the M70s, which is the kit that I'm showing you today, it was all gone. But a lot of things on this gun are real similar. You know, the milled construction here, the milled mag catch, it's not stamped. In fact, very, very few stamped parts on this gun whatsoever. Now, this is a underfolder. So, obviously, some of the back end is going to be a little different here. You can see there's more of a blocking plate in the back and a couple holes in the side of the receiver. I keep on wanting to call this a rear trunnion. It's actually not, it's just the rear part of the receiver, right? But, yep. With this being a folder, the back's gonna be a little different. The bolt hole opens definitely different, but other than that, a lot of these features are gonna be the same as far as the types of, you know, workmanship and materials and the way these guns were made. So yeah, here's a little side-by-side -side for you guys. You don't see a lot of M64s and M70s, so hopefully this provides a reference to somebody out there who's interested in these guns. Like I said, both original barrels. I keep saying original barrel, original barrel, but you guys get what I'm saying. It just sucks the way it is nowadays where for the most part these kits that are available don't come with original barrels sometimes we get lucky and somebody's selling new old stock but there we go we can take a look here at the the differences in the receivers you'll clearly see quite a bit of difference right there right so yeah same roll mark though the old Zestava Yugoslavia All right, let me put this one back up here A lot of people ask me about this gun because it's always hanging behind me in the videos and 
I know a lot of you have seen it a million times and heard me talk about it a million times. Just thought it might be cool to, you know, show them side by side just because they're both right next to each other and it's a good opportunity to look at the, the similarities that they share. I know for a fact that I had a, um, an upper hand guard, but because I just very, very briefly opened the box. I mean, this is for all intents and purposes an unboxing, but I did open it up just very briefly when I first got it in to be like, okay, is this my um, Yugo kit? Yep, looks like everything's there. And I immediately noticed how nice the wood was. I didn't even have time to go through originally and um, make sure all the parts are matching, but the couple I could see through the bag were, so I knew there was some hope. So yeah, there's kind of an initial um, overview on the Yugo M70. If you guys have any questions, you can go ahead and ask me. I might be able to, to answer. There's our hammer spring. I didn't show all of the um, small parts, but I think I got them all now. I always call this the bag of goodies. And that's usually where most of the Cosmoline is. The Cosmoline is pretty thick. But yeah, I did a stream a long time ago talking about Yugo AKs. Maybe I should start doing some more Yugo videos because it seems like with the Zestava USA, a lot of people just getting into the AK are expressing some interest in them and wondering about them. And the Yugos have always been interesting to me because they're kind of like the Chinese as far as, yeah, they made an AK pattern rifle, but none of it was ever like completely, you know, commensurate with the Russian type or the main pattern. So... Yugoslavia, yeah, they made an AKM, kind of, sort of, but not exactly. Yeah, they made a milled receiver gun. The first gen is kind of a Type 2, but not exactly. Then when they went to the M70s, they're kind of a Type 3, but not quite. So, and, and there's so many little different variants of them and, and whatnot. I've always found them to be interesting. And right there at the end, underneath the, um, the bag. I told you guys I had a handguard. So let's look at this real quick. I knew everything was in here because I had taken an initial glance, but I was like, where's it at? It was underneath this thick bag. But there we go. Nice looking condition upper handguard with the steel insert. That's to keep it from clattering and, you know, wobbling around as much. But yeah, so looking pretty good. So everything looks complete, man. I want to thank Apex and... You know, like I said, the fact that they made a mistake, it is what it is. This wasn't a gun I was going to be able to get built today anyways, or tomorrow. As long as it worked out in the end, that's all I wanted. I was just felt lucky to get an original barreled kit in this day and age, especially for the price that it was when I bought it. Now, I noticed the price had gone up on them before they sold out, but I, I got this for a really fair price. I was happy. And, you know, you don't really judge somebody by how when things are going good. You know, if everything's perfect then whatever. But when someone, you know, makes a little mistake and you call them politely and they're cool as heck with you, not only make it right, but they sent me an excellent, you know, specimen here. That's kind of how I like to judge somebody. So Apex is good to go. I've been a customer of theirs a long time. First time I had an issue, but now that I have had an issue and they've taken care of me, I actually recommend them even higher. So with that M64 and then I've got a couple of these M70 AB2s stamped receiver bulge trunnion underfolder still with the grenade capability though I thought you know after a while you know I'll get this rewelded and then it'll just kind of look cool to have them all in series you know the M70B the fixed stock is one that I'm missing I've got a couple of the RPKs, the M72Bs, you know, the different underfolders, M72, you know, some PAPs, whatever. Um, even the M72 AB1 underfolding RPK. But I do not have a current, you know, a milled, um, a milled M70, and I kind of can't wait. So I'm sure the wait's going to be super, super long. 
So when I do get ready to send this out, I'll let you guys know. And then, if the Lord's willing, and we can even have these guns by then, we'll be able to have these guns by then, guys. We got to keep fighting for our rights. But you guys know what I'm saying. A couple, two years later, I'll probably get the finished product back. Because that's about how long it takes, unfortunately, to have a skilled builder do a reweld. They have a very, very long wait. There's a lot of demand. So, yeah. If you guys are interested in more of the Yugo rifles, let me know. I'll do more videos on them. They're not all going to be 45 minutes. Just thought I'd do a little bit longer video today. For those of you that like to have a little bit of something to listen to. Like I said, when you're bored or trying to blow off time at work or whatever the deal is. So here we have a bolt hold open follower, by the way, like I was talking earlier. And then as soon as I remove the mag, it slams home. So that's going to be a big difference between that M64 and everything else. Just thought I'd show you. For those of you that were wondering what I was talking about as far as, oh, I'm on camera. I can't put the mag in. <laughs> you guys know how this goes. You can do the stupidest, simplest thing. And when it's on camera, it's like, oh, oh, it's my first time ever putting an AK mag. Yeah. All right, guys, there's an update on the kit for those of you that were kind of curious and a few of you were wishing me the best of luck. And I'm happy. The new kit looks great. I'm sure it's going to make a great reweld. And I'll keep you guys up to date. All right. I could probably go two or three more hours just talking about you go AKs, but yeah, you guys have probably had enough. So <laughs> I'll talk to you guys more about these guns later. And yeah, hopefully you enjoyed. All right, thanks for watching and have a good one.